Welcome back to Retrobytes. Got a good episode for you today. Was out on eBay last week and looking at motherboard CPU combos and I found this Pentium 4 system super cheap. Uh, it's an OEM board, Dell OEM I think, but uh, or no, compact. But uh, it was only ten dollars. Uh, and that got me thinking, what if I went around eBay, around Amazon, and I picked the cheapest components I could find to build a full gaming PC. Retro gaming PC, that is. So I did just that. Went around eBay and I found cheap power supply, hard drive. I could not find, a, for the life of me, a cheap DVD-ROM, uh, or CD-ROM even. So uh, I went to Amazon for that. And um, the case as well, uh, the cheapest case that I could get shipped was this uh, Rosewell one. And, and you know, the total came to like $60 for the whole thing, and I couldn't help but think that I could do better on uh, eBay. So I changed my search parameters and I looked for thin clients instead. I've seen some pretty cheap thin clients on eBay, but uh, I've never seen, you know, this new of a thin client for so cheap. These are $10 each. And these are only five years old. Um, so, cool. <laughs> um, so yeah, the specs on this thing, uh, it's got an AMD dual core CPU, um, four gigabytes of RAM. The GPU is a HD 6320, wow. And th all of this for only $10. You know, usually when you see things like this on eBay, it's it's a scam, but you know, it, it's 10 bucks. If I get scammed, I'm only out 10 bucks. So what the hell, I ordered it. What do you know? It wasn't a scam, here it is. Smaller than I thought. Um, Nice I.O. on the back. Looks like a spot for some antennas for Wi-Fi. Front audio and uh, USB ports. Not bad. So, you know, this thing looks really cool. Um, and you guys know me. I I have to tear it open and see what's inside. So, uh, sure enough. <laughs> that was the first thing I did. I didn't even turn it on. Um, but yeah, I, I wanted to get in here anyway and, and look at the cooling. Because uh, it didn't... Looked like there was a fan, and sure enough, there's no fan. This is all passively cooled. Um, and it's got a CPU and a GPU on here, so passively cooled CPU and GPU. Now, I know thin clients are underpowered, but uh, this one's pretty high-end um, for what it is. And honestly, I can't believe I got it for $10. Um, so yeah, here's the uh, CPU on the right and the GPU on the left. Um, I assume it is anyway, because uh, the CPU is probably closer to the RAM. Um, you can see actually the bus lines running up to the RAM. And the GPU here is uh, probably the smaller one of the two. So anyway, while I'm in here, um, I'm going to replace the thermal compound. Uh, I, I do worry about cooling this thing, um, you know, since it's all passive. So some new thermal paste on. Um, I'll get this thing reassembled. I wanted to see if I had any uh, RAM, since there's an open slot there. Now, this is DDR3, which is uh, kind of new, um, considering this channel's Retrobytes. I, I, I don't really have a lot of newer components just laying around, and I found this DDR3, but uh, it was a slower speed. And I know the GPU is using RAM sticks for memory, so I didn't want to slow down the GPU. So I just left it. It's got 4 gigs. That should be enough. Uh, so my plans for this machine, um, you know, I was going to do like, you know, see if I could install Windows 95 on it or something like that. But I thought I'd have a little more fun and uh, try out uh, emulation. I'm not really big into emulation, but I thought I'd give it a go. And uh, if you're going rem emulation on a system like this, um, you've got to go with RetroPie. RetroPie is really cool, and I've never tried it before. But uh, basically, it's kind of like a, a front end for for emulators for anything, Nintendo, uh, N64, PlayStation, 
all the way back to you know Atari and um, so yeah this is what I wanted to go with um, now RetroPie the name uh, is because it, it's it was designed to run on a Raspberry Pi uh, but you can also install it on a on a regular PC if you put uh, a Linux on that PC now I'm no stranger to Linux uh, so for me really all that means is just uh, installing Linux Mint which is my Linux distribution of choice um, installing Linux Mint and then installing RetroPie on top of it uh, so that's what I'm gonna do um, I've got uh, Linux Mint 18 here on a thumb drive uh, so I'll just go ahead and uh, get it installed so installing Linux Mint uh, has gotten a lot easier uh, compared to like you know trying to install Linux 15 years ago it's not too bad and uh, fortunately Linux Mint is a really light um, Linux distribution which is important because I've only got 16 gigabytes of storage here um, so yeah I installed Linux Mint and I set it to automatically log in uh, it only took 10 minutes to get the installation done uh, I had this problem where I couldn't get uh, video over DisplayPort um, I'm using a DisplayPort to HDMI adapter with this monitor and I'm doing this because I want to get audio out of the over over the HDMI cable uh, so I don't have to run a separate audio jack but every time I would switch it to to use the display port as an input monitor it would just go blank not off just blank um, so I think this was actually my cable and not the thin client so I ended up going with a HDMI cable with a display or a, a DVI adapter um, disadvantage being that I can't get audio now over my HDMI cable to run a separate three and a half millimeter jack uh, from the headphone port on the front of the thin client to the monitor which is okay I guess um, but yeah I'll definitely want to get a new cable so the uh, RetroPie guide online is it's pretty good it's really straightforward um, you know entering some commands and then just sitting back and waiting for the next step uh, it it was really slow and I didn't anticipate how long this would take um, <laughs> I'd seen some places online say it takes like an hour and uh, mine ended up taking close to three hours to install RetroPie and I'm watching it and I'm noticing that my CPUs are just pegged here so I'm thinking maybe it's thermal throttling um, so I grabbed a CPU fan I had laying around and I I put it on the top of the case upside down so it would suck air out of it, uh, you know, pull air across those fins, hoping that would speed it up, but it it didn't really. <laughs> it did eventually complete though, and uh, I intend to use a Xbox controller with this, um, and the instructions say that you need to go and. Uh, through the menu and install the uh, Xbox driver. So I uh, went ahead and did that Got it set to start automatically when the system boots up And what do you know it uh, it worked? <laughs> cool, uh, it's asking me to set up my controller uh, so I run through all the key mappings and uh, Get into the GUI, but there's no games there. Uh, that's because I haven't copied them over yet um, so I've got a uh, few ROMs here. I'll just get them copied over real quick so we can test this out and see what we can do. Hmm. No games. Uh, yeah, turns out you can't use the uh, zip folders. You have to you have to extract the zip files. Didn't know that. Okay. So, uh, despite the uh, super thrilled expression on my face, uh, I'm pretty excited that it's running. Uh, yeah, this is uh, Star Fox. 
looks like it's running pretty well. Um, you know, I, I did some tweaks, you know, to like aspect ratio and stuff like that. I didn't want it filling the whole screen. I'm, I'm more a 4x3 kind of guy. Uh, Super Nintendo ran really well, but uh, I went to try uh, N64. I went to try F0X and oh no. Oh no, that is not good. So, uh, yeah, really bad. I don't know why this isn't working. It should be enough horsepower to run in 64 games. So I spent a few hours troubleshooting um, all sorts of emulator settings and making sure the hardware was tweaked. I got pretty convinced that it was just because I was running Linux, believe it or not. So I put in another hard drive and I installed Windows 7 to it and loaded up an emulator and it ran smooth as butter, which is super disappointing because uh, I really wanted the RetroPie kind of console uh, feel for this, you know, so I could just, you know, stick it under the TV at my entertainment center and, and, you know, the kids could play it and, you know, have that experience that I had as a kid, you know, with, with console gaming. Um, so I'm a little disappointed. I, I don't really know what else to do. If you guys have any ideas or if you've dealt with RetroPie before on x86 architecture, if you can help me out, I'd really appreciate it. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think I can do to improve improve the performance of the emulator on Linux. Um, I really want to get this working and I'm looking forward to uh, hearing what you guys have to say. Uh, again, thanks for watching Retrobytes and I'll, I'll see you guys soon.